question. Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Do you hear the abundant rain coming? Do you feel the spirit of the Lord in this place? Do you hear it? Are you feeling it? We are at peace one with another. Unity is present. And therefore, the commandments, the abundant rain has been sent. Do you have the faith to open your heart, to open your mind to receive what the Lord has for you today? The rain is coming. I can hear the wind. I can envision it raining down upon us, saturating us, healing us, delivering us. The shackles are falling off. The chains and the bounds are being broken. The prison of the Lord is in this place. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? Can you look around in the sanctuary and see it? Can you see it upon your brothers and sisters in Christ, what the Lord is doing in, the, in their lives? Can you hear it? What does he have for them? I stand before you to bring forth the word today. In a week that has been long. I laid my mother to rest on Thursday. But I rejoice as I celebrate her life. Her earth suit was laid to rest Thursday, but her spirit was with the Lord on the 22nd of January. I will see her again. prayers and the power of the Lord that I'm standing before you today. The tears that I may shed are tears of joy, tears of rejoicing. Her love will never be forgotten and I will see her again. Peace. Let that be the word for today. Faith is the currency of the kingdom. Peace and unity enables God to move in our lives. Today's word is going to be coming out of Colossians 3. Oh, I'm sorry. Before I get started, first I want to give all honor unto God, the eternal creator of all things. And unto the said angel of this house, Pastor Williams, for allowing me to stand in his absence. I want to give thanks. And I pray with you that him and First Lady receive all the rest that they, that they deserve and that they need. Amen. Amen. And to my brothers and sisters in Christ, today I'm going to be coming out of Colossians 3, starting with verse 12 through 17. Once you're there, let's acknowledge by saying amen. amen. And it reads, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, as even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do it all in the name of Lord Jesus, 
giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Gracious Father in heaven, first of all, we just want to thank you for this time. We thank you for this gathering of your saints. Father, I ask now that you speak through me unto your people, the sheep of your pasture, that you would give each of us, Heavenly Father, individually as well as collectively, Heavenly Father, a relevant word that will strengthen us and carry us. Because you are the creator of all things and you are holy and righteous, we ask, Father, that your miracles and your signs and wonders will be on display, Heavenly Father, in our lives. For you have created us to be the lights of the world. We give all glory, all honor, and we give you all thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Brothers and sisters in Christ, the church has an identity crisis. For the last two and a half years, the church has been going through a transition to where the mega is now closed and the small is busting forth. It's been a transition, a swappage to where the things of the world that was interjected into church has now caused, um, as I would say, a breach a breach of God's ways of doing things in the body of Christ. What may seem right in the eyes of the Lord is now considered wrong, and what is wrong is now considered right. The church has a problem. Christ is still ahead of the church, but it's the body that has allowed certain things to enter in, has lost the signs of being righteous and holy. Lost his signs of being sanctified and purified. Lost his signs of the healings and deliverances and the things that the church used to be known for. But Christ is still ahead. Christ hasn't moved. It's the body that has allowed things to be interjected into its way of life. So I want to talk to you today about the elect of God. See, we are the elect of God. We are the sanctified, the called out ones, the ecclesia. We are what Peter talks about in 2nd 2 and 9, being that chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We proclaim that we've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light, but there's still areas of darkness in our lives. We proclaim that, you know, we, we are the called out ones, but there's areas of bitterness, areas of unforgiveness in our lives. Thursday when I laid my mother's remains to rest and I was listening to how everybody talked about my mom, how her meekness and her love was always on display for her children. There were seven of us, but also for every child that was in the neighborhood. I have a good friend of mine sitting right there, Jack, and he said, my mom was the only mom that has ever put him on punishment if he didn't even live in the house. <laughs> but that's just who she was, and she praised the Lord. She sung. Melody. She sung the hymns and the psalms in our, in our home as I was growing up. I can remember when we lived in Virginia, me and my mom used to walk two blocks to church. She never missed an opportunity to have her, her family, her children in church. But something got lost along the way. These last two and a half years of dealing with COVID has given people excuses to not come to church. The doors of the church are always open. And we should never forsake the assembly of ourselves. Because as I stated earlier when I first started, it I talked about the peace and the unity that God would command a blessing. It's okay. It's okay. If you feel it necessary to sit at home and watch it on television or watch it on the internet 
or watch it on YouTube, but you're forsaking the assembly of yourselves and the power that God has ordained for his people when they gather to worship and praise him in the spirit and the truth of his word. And I mentioned being sanctified. Sanctification of spirit, the word sanctification is related to the word saints. Linda, I'm not talking about the New Orleans saints. I'm, taking, I'm talking about being sanctified to being separated, set apart. To be set apart. To be governed by the word of God. Ordained and set apart before the foundation of the world to live in a time such as this. We are the lights that God has placed here. We have been placed upon a hill to where our lights should not be hidden. We should not be distracted, nor should we be hindered. Because God has already given us dominion. He has already given us the power to overcome every obstacle heavenly, and that has been placed before us. He has given us the ability to speak to our mountains and declare the righteousness of the Lord in this time and in this day. Wake up, church. Wake up and speak with an open mouth what God is telling you to speak and to do. If you have any unforgiveness in your heart, don't leave out of this sanctuary today with it in you still. We walk around sometimes with a, fa with a facade. We walk around saying everything is okay. On the surface, it may look okay. But AP Wide, as a landscaper, you know. You may cut down the weed on top, but there's always a root. And roots grow deep. And sometimes you have to dig that thing up. You have to unearth that thing. Father, speak. Your children are listening right now. We are sanctified. We are purified. We are holy and we are righteous because he is the justifier. He has justified us through Christ Jesus. For bearing one another, if any man has a quarrel against even, as Christ forgave you. That right there should always be at the forefront in our relationships. The ones that are good and the ones not so good. Can you imagine if God didn't send his son to hang upon the cross, broken body, shared blood? If he didn't give his son that we would be saved, can you imagine how God would deal with us? Can you imagine the dangers seen and unseen would have entered into our lives if it wasn't for the love of God and the mercy and the grace that he had put upon us? How his hands have kept us? How the Holy Spirit has led and guided us, keeping us out of places? Keeping us out of places that would have took our lives? Put us in position to, to have sicknesses and death come upon us? Can you imagine? God has truly kept us. We are one body, but many members, but Christ being ahead. We should have plenty of mercy one for another. Paul writes to this church. And he starts out by saying in the first chapter that the love that they have one for another, he has taken notice of it. But then he gets down to chapter 3 and he reminds them, put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, love, kindness, humbleness of mind. Maybe that's what the problem is that we can't forgive. Maybe we're not humble enough. Maybe we're, not, maybe we're not walking in the full humility that God requires and, and expects of us. Maybe we're so into ourselves that we can't see anything else around us. Maybe we have agendas that is not of God. Maybe it's the things that's in our lives that 
we're not allowing God to change or circumcise from our lives. You know, we all say, God created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit within me. When he attempts to do it, do you shut it out? Do you, do you shut him out? Do you close the door? Can you take correction? Can you receive the love and the words, Heavenly Father, I mean, the words from the Heavenly Father that you need to change your life? Some people come in. It's business as usual. You come in, you raise your hand, you sing a song, you do your dance. And then you leave and you go back to, as pastor would say, hellish lives. But we are the called out ones. We are the ecclesia. We are the chosen generation of royal priesthood and the holy nation. And we should look like God. We should talk like God. He said he created us in his image and his likeness. And he gave us dominion. You know what that means? That means we have the authority that he has invested in us. And the blood of Christ that has been sprinkled upon us. That has redeemed us back unto him. And above all things, put on charity, put on love which is the bond of perfectness. Don't you want a perfect life? Don't you desire to have a life that is perfect? Then you have to ask yourself the question, if it's not, where's the love? Where's the commitment? Where's the consistency in loving and serving? We were here Wednesday night, and Pastor... We talked, you know, he's talking about tithes and offering. Those that seep sparingly will reap sparingly. Those that sow abundantly will reap abundantly. What are you sowing in your life? Are you sowing abundant love in your life? If you sow abundant love in your life, you're going to reap abundant love. If you sow love sparingly, you're going to reap love sparingly. What are you sowing? Better yet, who are you sowing it to? <laughs> For we do know, because we all adults in here, all love is not good love. All relationships are not good relationships. Sometimes we find ourselves in situations that we desire not to be in because we didn't heed to what the Spirit was telling us. You know, I, my life, I had the opportunity to overcome drug addiction, alcoholism, overcome a life that was not conducive for God to work in. But by the prayers of a loving mother, a loving grandmother, a loving father, a loving wife, I was able to through the power of Christ to overcome all those obstacles, all those distractions. I know I had a praying mother and a praying grandmother and a praying father. I know I have praying friends and family. I know I have praying church members because I felt the prayers and the condolences and the calls when my mother passed away and just people just checking in with me just to make sure everything was all right. See, that's the love of Christ that dwelleth in the body. That's what the body is there for. When one area of the body is weakened, the other parts of the body was just come in to strengthen, to edify, to encourage, to uplift, to keep whole. To where it should never be any lack, nothing missing, nothing broken in our lives. All glory be to God. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Okay? Out of, out of abundance of the heart, uh, excuse me, out of abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Okay, the question is, what are you speaking? What are you saying? You know, are you speaking life? Or are you speaking death? Parents, when you speak of your children, are you speaking life? 
Are you speaking words of encouragement? Or are you speaking unto them, you just like your daddy? Your mama wasn't nothing? You ain't going to never be nothing. You're only going to be a ditch digger. Instead of speaking things to empower them, to cause them to strive to achieve and to grow. That's the desire that the Lord has for us all, is to prosper that our soul prospers. What are you speaking? What do you have in your heart? If it's any roots of bitterness, if it's any disdain for a brother or a sister, you got to release that thing. You got to get that thing out of your out of your system. I heard Dr. Johnson this morning on uh, Kingdom Building. He talks about he talked about unforgiveness ca- will cause you to become sick, cause you to have anxiety and depression. Will cause you to just ah just ah I guess it's, ah ah. You know, you know, have, I mean, I mean, as me and my brother joke all the time, have you ever, you know, just been in the presence of people, they look at you, and the only thing, only thing you can just hear, <laughs> and you know, but you show love anyway. And see, but it's, it's not under your own strength, but it's the love of God that's operating through you. Sanctified. The called out ones. The world didn't like Jesus. It's not going to like you. So stop trying to assimilate yourself to the way that the world do things. Stop being led by your emotions. I heard that in kingdom building this morning. Emotions dwell in the soul of man. The soul, excuse me, emotions and the Holy Spirit cannot operate together. Our God is not an emotional God, but he's a just God. And we're not supposed to be bound by emotions. We should be wise in all our earthly dealings while we're here. Amen? Amen. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. In your prayer time, are you seeking wisdom? Are you asking God for understanding? Or are you just asking him for favor and to let me hit the lottery? Let me buy this new Benz, a new car. You know, what are you asking God for? What are you seeking after? Teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. When we gather here on Sunday mornings and the choir is singing in the spirit, are you in tune with them? Have you opened your hearts? Have you opened your thoughts and your minds to focus upon the creator of all things? Showing the gratitude and thanksgiving of the life that we now live. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Amen. Amen. Whatever you do in word and deed, do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever you do in word and deed, do in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. I had some scriptures wrote down and but I didn't 
I didn't really have an opportunity to get to them. I'm getting ready to close. I pray that the word that was spoken is settled in your hearts. I pray that the, the joy of the Lord will go with you when we leave this place. Are you happy? Are you joyful? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Do you hear it? Amen. If you would, stand to your feet. The doors of the church is now open. You could come by letter, Christian experience, a candidate for baptism. If anything has been said today, well, I'll tell you what, the altar is open. If there's anyone that needs prayer, come to the altar. Come and join me at the altar. please. Gracious Father in heaven, the eternal God, the creator of all things. Father, we give you thanks. We thank you, Father, for your holy and divine presence and your word that has gone forth this day. Father God, we ask right now that your Holy Spirit would just fall fresh upon those that have come to the altar and those, Father, that are sitting in their seats and desiring, Heavenly Father, a touch just from you. Lord Jesus, just touch us all. Heal us, Heavenly Father, where we be healing. Mend us, Heavenly Father, where there, be, where there may be brokenness. Father God, our desire is to be found pleasing unto you as your children, as your sons and your daughters, Father. We ask for your wisdom and understanding in all matters concerning life. Father, continue to create us a clean heart and renew the right spirit within us. Circumcise, Heavenly Father, our hearts to where there be no remnants, Heavenly Father, of demonic influences or hindrances or distractions. Father, God, our minds and our hearts, Heavenly Father, are open to receive all that you have for us. So, Father, let your light shine within us. Let your Holy Spirit ignite the gifts, Heavenly Father, that you have placed within each and every one of us to where the, your purpose and your destiny would be fulfilled, Father, for your kingdom. Father, God, we ask that the heads of protection around our lives be strong. And those, Heavenly Father, that we come in contact will know that there is a God in heaven and that Jesus is Lord. Father, we just want to tell you thank you. We thank you, Lord, for how you have supplied all our needs according to your riches and glory. We thank you, Lord, that you have rebuked the devourer, Father, from our lives. We thank you, Lord, for the dominion that you have given us authority, Father, to speak in your name. Father, we love you and we praise you. Keep us always, Father, in your care. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.